thank you guys so much for supporting for the last year. The heel has really taken off and uh, given us an opportunity to, to do some more stuff and run around. Thank you guys for buying the sunglasses and trying them out. They really are state of the art. Well, okay, so two years of driving, about two years of driving. It has been awesome. Come on. You know what sucks about fly fishing? Nothing. The vehicle, it's a showstopper. Every time I come out to it, someone's taking a picture of it. The LS swap and transmission swap have made it kind of like a modern drivetrain. We crossed the country like four times with this bus. Pretty much everybody sees it has a smile on their face and that is a, a true honor to be a part of that whole situation. This makes people happy. <laughs> Everybody loves this bus. Have something you build make people happy. That's wild. And then the people that don't like it, I've seen a few. Rob him yeah. for the win. I definitely wouldn't want to hang out with them. Through driving the bus for the last uh, year or so, being on the road, I've found some stuff that really needs to be addressed. We're gonna be trapped in Charleston, South Carolina for a little bit. Broke down in the middle of an episode. Busasaurus is going through its third transmission oh, in the woo. first year. Oh, go on. Yeah, boy! Oh, we got... Oh, oh, I lost God, my knife. Dude. I gotta put my plumber's hat on. Now it's time to put the construction hat back on. It's just a disaster. I don't know a ton, but I know that a spring is not supposed to be inverted like that. See how it goes. Down and then up. It's supposed to just go oh. This thing is seeing maybe a few too many miles. Welcome to another exciting episode of Fishing <laughs> with Jay. It's Bus Build 2.0 time. Start. Yeah. Oh man. This year in the bus has been absolutely incredible. But it also made me realize I am not ready. There's been so many things that uh, have needed to be done before I took off originally. The list grows long, but uh, the only way to get it going is to start, I guess. So here we go. It's been about three months, broke down to Texas. Now I got it lifted all the way back to Cody Crafton. Mr. Cody Crafton, what's going on over here? Man, you know, every day I'm hustling. Lucky, lucky, lucky. Old Cody Craft got himself a new shop. We just put the bus in. This shop is gonna rule. That's the plan. When we had the bus in previously to do the motor swap, we were at his house. He was here for 12 hours a day for like two or three weeks. I mean, we got to be super tight. Once Jay got back to Texas, we just had to. I had to get this thing in, man. I love this thing. Now he's just got this gigantic warehouse with all sorts of fun, fun toys. Look at this. Oh, the toolbox is back. Welders, TIG. What? Holy smokes, dude. This is gonna be nuts. Yeah. Should be able to uh, hopefully make a living out of here. <laughs> just so excited and I'm so motivated to just keep building awesome stuff. Cody said, here's a key, have at it. There's just been a lot of little things that he's just been tolerating or trying to, to get by with. You know, when we started this project, we were in such a rush because we were already like two months behind schedule. You know, there's some stuff we didn't really get a chance to get to do. Having access to this shop is a rare treat for me because this would be really hard to do on the road. You know, he calls me all the time. And it's like, oh man, this is going on and that's going on. And I'm like, man, if you could just post up in the shop for a week or two while you're doing editing or whatever it is you're doing, you know, we could just get a lot of these little finicky things knocked out that are just driving you nuts. I got to take advantage of that. That's that's a situation I just can't. So now we know, because you've spent enough time in it, the how and the why of what we need to do. And so instead of just throwing a bunch of money at it, we have been able to pair down the budget to things that we actually need. Lemon, the thing sour. So sour and citrusy. Boy, Texas got me whooped with this transmission. 
take it shop to shop to shop. Every time I take it to a shop, oh, man. I get it back worse than it was. How does that work? I don't know how much I can take of this. Transmissions are like Chinese algebra in there, and I have no idea what's going on in there. I've been to multiple transmission rebuilders. Major surgery time. I'm not really an I told you so kind of person. But the fact that you've had this much trouble with this thing is just mind boggling. Normally we could fix stuff, but this pain in the ass transmission, holy smokes, four times rebuilt. It's finally coming out of here. She go. Maybe for the last time. All we needed was one off of Facebook Marketplace. <laughs> the new transmission. Facebook find for $800. No clue if it works or not, but I've been broke down for a month and a half. So I'm about to try anything uh, to get a warranted new remanufactured transmission. It's about five grand, but crazily enough, it's four weeks of wait time. I don't got that because I got it. Head out for the next shoot. I got another transmission on Facebook. Worst idea ever. But I just want to see what is wrong. It, 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 it's swapping the transmission. Yeah. Does that have anything to do with it? No clue. We'll see. Man, I really hope this works out because Jay has just gotten the runaround from every other shop that he's been to. It's been ridiculous. Let's see if we can slide her in and see what have happened. This replacement transmission will be like a band aid for the situation until I can figure out either how to fix this one or maybe have to just replace it, which is getting expensive. You know, the good news is this hasn't just been a rolling set of problems. I mean, yeah, the transmission thing has been a heartache and nobody was wanting to help, but you know, this thing crossed the country for the first time in the last two years. All right, so we got the new transmission in and it is time to see if we made the right decision or not. I've been very excited to swap this transmission the whole time. But right now I'm very nervous because uh, we're about to spark it up and see if it actually operates. Use transmission. Holy smokes, if it works, it's gonna change my life. Oh, I got my fingers crossed on this one. Too bad. Yeah, no weird noises. That's a super benefit. Now what? So far so good. That's about all I got to say. I am optimistic for you. I really do want this to work. Come on, come on, please. Please, I just need one win. Need to win. I need one win this month. <laughs> All aboard. <laughs> Come on, baby. Come on. Is that better? I don't know. It doesn't seem like it, does it? I say we're going 16. I'd say you probably shut it off for a minute. <sighs> yeah. I don't know. Just swap the other transmission and it's doing the exact same thing as the last transmission. What a thorn in the side. We did a, a lot of work to try to get this thing in and kind of doing the same stuff. What are you thinking? Uh, first thing is KISS principle. Okay. Keep it simple, stupid. Right, this has been a bit of a situation. Okay. Yeah. I think I found a problem, buddy. What do you mean? Well, that don't look so great. Good. Yeah. Sitting on the exhaust. Well, well, well. Cody has found where someone has moved the loom to on top of the exhaust. Uh, on top of the exhaust manifold, and that's just straight up too hot. But look at this. All these wires to the transmission harness are melted together. I think we found a problem. I hope that doesn't look good. There's a little bit of a good news. We've got, on this system, we have one connector. Ooh, it's new. It's shiny, it's complete, it's not melted. Welcome to the future. The future's looking bright. All my money's on this guy, all my money. I mean, actually a lot of money, a lot of money and a lot of time. Misdiagnosis after misdiagnosis, uh, and it just turns out I needed to stop by Cody Crafted and, and have him look at it for about an hour and a half. 
About an hour and a half to replace that harness, roughly. The moment of truth. We made like five connections and get her done. I'm gonna cut some wires, splice some wires, plug this into the transfer case, see if we run. You know, it's a 40 year old vehicle that's essentially completely custom at this point. I mean, it started off custom. It was a bus chassis, which is, you know, upfitted. And then it was four wheel drive. And then when Jay got a hold of it, you know, we did all our motor stuff and our, tra you know, transfer case stuff. And I mean, this thing's, they, they ain't, they ain't hardly anything left that's GM. As far as the original stuff, you're, you're down to like the chassis and the power steering pump. No, we're not even running the power steering pump. The other major thing is the rear springs. Springs, I think, are 40 years old. I guess they just get tired over time. And these got real tired. See how much clearance is there? Oh, so much. No, uh, not so much. Do you see this over here? But those rear leaf springs are original from back when the kids used to ride this thing to school. It's just one of those deals where, you know, we got a lot of stuff we got to do. Again, leaf springs are supposed to be curved up. But uh, these ones kind of go straight and then down in here. And that's, that's trouble right there. That's a, uh... see, I, I once took a truck and converted to run on vegetable oil and drove to Peru with my homies at Motive Fishing. And uh, we lost a leaf spring just because of tiredness and beating on it. It was really hard to replace that leaf spring, but uh, more so, we were stuck in a really precarious situation. New springs. First thing we gotta do is get the wheels out of the way, because if we're gonna do anything, we can't have tires in the way. You know, he's got this sweet vintage motorcycle, dual sport that he likes to haul around and we don't have enough spring support in the back to be able to actually you know use that um, and to haul it around so we've got to get some rear springs made Ooh, or springs. find something that'll work better uh, also the bus sits like this to one side is it like an inch and a half or something uh, so that's got to be that's got to be addressed i mean we even built that sweet back porch to be able to hold that motorcycle and built it strong enough to do that, but it hasn't ever got to ride there because we can't trust the rear suspension. So there's just so many little things that we really didn't have time to do. And now, you know, Jay lives not far from here. So it's cool that he's back around long enough that we can actually get some of this stuff done before he's gotta be off in the wobble yonder, you know, running this thing up and down the road. Place you gotta go. All the people you gotta see. All the hands you gotta kiss, all the babies you gotta shake. I gotta shake some babies. That's right, that's right. It's been a little while since I shook, shook a good baby. <laughs> you know, but uh, I mean, not yeah, too It's long. not supposed to be sitting sideways like Paul Wall. Oops. Well, these front shackles, these were supposed to be a temporary thing so we could set the ride height. They got a little S shape in them now. And get him on the road. And uh, so that's gonna be something we gotta address. That's not good. You know, they did great. Oops. Until he decided to go rock crawling in a bus uh, and bent them. We never got back around because he's been on the road the whole time. Okay, you know, it's been a little while. It's been a little while, but it's gonna work. Look, these guys all torched up. Come on. It's been it's been a little while since I did a bit of welding, but I used to love the hell out of it. And it's it's super fun. Magic happens. And it started with a list not so long and the list grows every day. It seems like it grows every day. Rack has seen better days. See how that works. Come on. What a pain. Basically, we're gonna have to take it off, sandblast it. So, the underneath of the rack was just rusted all the doo-doo. Oh yeah. She's had better days. And it was literally gonna like eat the roof apart. So we got that all ground down and took the rack off, and we're gonna leave the rack off for now. It's gonna give you the opportunity to run more solar panels. The plan is to paint the roof with a thermal paint that's supposed to block a decent percentage of IR and UV and all the acronym lights. It's like sunglasses for the uh, roof. Delays after delays. I'm supposed to finish up the next episode. Now that we're here for you know, kind of bus build 2.0. He's had some time to figure out what he's really doing with it. We kind of had some aspirations early on that we didn't necessarily, they weren't really true needs, but now we know what the needs are. 
and we know where we need to go with a few different aspects of finalizing the build to make it like literally the ultimate fishing rig. Went with a 10 and a half inch filter because this is the one that came off. Burger. Yeah, it doesn't burger very well. Overflow line here. But basically this guy, like that. It's really close. Uh, there's just a few things. Man, there's been so many things that uh, have needed to be done before I took off originally. Oh boy. I got the shaft. <laughs> gotta put my plumber's hat on. This thing's gotta go in. I'm gonna use these things because I can fill them up for seven bucks and get them anywhere. Being able to wash your hands or just have running water is a pretty big deal in my old world. Lots of little things that I realized really needed to get done. One of those things is the grill. I'm gonna spiffy this one. It's 40 years old, cracked, and ugly. The idea is take it off and paint it. Which I know it's not super legit, but come on. I mean, that's gotta be better. I like that. The biggest pain in the ass in all this stuff is prep work. Cleaning and sanding and, I mean, like, is it a 84 or is it a 94? Who knows? Because it's black. That step right there, it's horrible. Oh. It looks all fancy now. I don't want people to walk on it, but it's a step. I don't really know what to do about that. Just took out this window. It never worked and we had a, a broken window here, so we replaced it with plexiglass, but get a new piece of glass in. The window latches have been broken for years. No AC, it gets really hot in there for everybody riding. Pretty miserable. Kind of the pain in the ass about this whole project is trying to do everything right. It was a lot easier in life when I just did what worked. But that's kind of what got me to have to do all this stuff. All right, last window, I'm whipped. The windows aren't a pleasure on a bus. Last one, come on, come on. Please go in easy, please go in easy. I think we're a few days out, but we're getting closer. It's fought us every step of the way, but I think we have it beat into submission. That's a big maybe, but it's definitely gonna be better than it was. Every time I, I'm about to check something off a list, I add three more things. Again, we thought this was gonna be three or four days, and things just keep on coming up and coming up. That if we don't fix them, uh, it's gonna suffer down the road. It's gonna make it tougher to fix next time, you know? I feel like we've won a battle, but the war still has a long ways to go. That's kind of tough to stomach. As you can see, the blackout tent is fantastic. Uh, all the windows have been resealed. All the latches for the windows, so now they all work. Windows, yay. Working windows, they go up, they go down. Whew. Time to do a little bit of woodwork. So we're back in Fort Worth, Texas, where my tools are in my little garage shop. And uh, we're gonna get some stuff done. I got a lot of cool wood and a lot of tools. I'm excited to reimagine what this what this whole bus needed and that's that's quite a bit because right now towards the back of the bus I just stack everything up on each other. So I'm trying to situate that by building some cabinets. So I'm back to the cabinets. Uh, everything's a disaster. It's like mad scientist season over in the garage. Now it's time to put the construction hat back on and uh, put my carpentry skills uh, back to use. Uh, not that I'm a, a great carpenter, but I've learned a lot and it's been massively fun. Building something yourself is uh, just ab absolutely fascinating. But anyway, as I've been driving, every time I take a sharp turn at any sort of speed, all of this stuff comes sliding off. So I'm building some lips and some shelves to kind of hopefully hold it in. 
This is a bird's eye maple. Right now I'm building the back cabin tree. Check it out. Oh man, I'll be dipped. This ain't working. I think I'm gonna have to try to joint two boards together. That's a little bit of a skill. Look at that. Seeing it work. Oh, this is gonna look killer. Nothing quite as satisfying as applying a finished piece of figure wood. This thing's really turning out. Really starting to come together. Up here, wouldn't be bad to have a little bit more storage. Maybe a shelf. Hand tools. It's like the cool thing to do. I'm totally fascinated by it, but I suck at it, so we'll see how this goes. You know, oh, liquor bottles over here, over there, some zebra wood, curling maple, oh, ripple dash, oh, oh, ooh, tried my hand at veneering, I think it worked. Hot dog. start up that bus and drive around a little bit it's like the whole thing's going through an earthquake so I got to figure out how to get these bottles in the liquor cabinet strapped down now I've never worked with leather before but uh, I have a very valuable tool in learning and that's YouTube so I've been watching all these YouTube videos kind of try to fool around with a little bit of leather see what happens This one, it's a junkyard find. It's the little things, junkyard find. It was beat to hell and uh, needed a serious case of sand in. Yeah, this was a serious pain in the ass getting it all uh, sanded up and, and gussied up. But it's gonna be well worth it. It doubles my storage. I'm really excited about this. Ooh. <laughs> yeah, see, it's a glove box that fit there. So sanded it all up, refinished it, oh. fixed a few things, and oh, now, shot. I think I got just the coolest little, little thing clicks down. And I got a little table. Glove box box, I guess. one was just so torn up. Holes in it, just crappy. And this is all rusted out. Time for new. So 
sweet. Okay. The doghouse is hot and not a place you want to be. But this doghouse, the little part that covers the engine inside the cab of the bus, is uh, uninsulated and loud. Just cleaned it up and I'm gonna install some sort of sound thermal protection in it and uh, we'll see how it goes. Do a little washy wash. You gotta check out this vinyl I'm gonna be using here. Oh dang, it's snakeskin. Yep. You know, something, something like that. You know? What do you think of that? Huh? Huh? Snakeskin doors. <laughs> Very important statement here, but I've uh, watched a lot of YouTube videos and I've never done this before. <laughs> And maybe this will be encouragement that you can do it too. The panel is done. It looks like this. Damn. It's kind of tacky, maybe not tacky enough. Day, uh, I have no idea, but it's sound deadening the door time. Made the new panel, and I'm gonna do a little add the whatnots, this stuff, to sound deaden the story. Hear how it sounds? See, I have a feeling that uh, when I'm rolling down the road, all of that stuff is making a ruckus, and then the music getting played through the kick ass sound system is also making uh, this vibrate and if I could deaden a little bit maybe it'll be a little quieter guess there's only one way to find out Now it's time to answer a question that I'm sure is on everybody's mind and uh, has been bugging, bugging folks for a while. Uh, where do you mount your blowgun for quick access? Well, it's going to be right here. Yeah. What do you think of that? It's very cold in Texas. While heat is always the problem in the bus because it's a big steel box cruising in the sun most of the time, when winter comes around, I get into quite a situation. That is next. I've had this cheap Chinese diesel heater for a little while and uh, never hooked it up. The scary part is drilling this big ass hole in the bottom of the bus. All right. There's All only right. One thing I hate more than drilling holes in the bottom of the this bus. That's drilling holes in the top. Doodad. So this maybe maybe it won't be so bad. This thing's gotta go straighter maybe. Oh, these little doohickeys gotta do that kind of thing. Uh, oh! These little wire thingies go somewhere, I'm sure, at some point. Shoot some seal in there. Not the singer seal, but like seal. Yeah, all right. It's gonna be so nice to have some heat. Plug this guy in. Last year I spent all like, but two weeks out of the bus. Maybe like so. I managed to avoid winter. I think for now, this little system is done. 
So it's long been cabinet time over here. Never really got it situated. It's always just been kind of piled with bags and boxes and stuff. And the fridge usually goes here, but now I put this heater in. I put this heater in and, you know, it's just a mess. Heavy stuff going down. I got this uh, fridge slide. I'm supposed to make the fridge slide out. Okay, here it is. After close to a month of working on this thing and fixing everything I possibly could with the help of Cody and his new shop that Cody crafted, I want to give her a spark and see if she runs. Come on. She started nice. That's a start. That is a start. You can, like I can just hold it with two fingers down here. Like it's, like it's not scary. It was a little scary at times. Oh, dude. Before, every day. yeah. Every day. 